David Sign Guy here, and today we're gonna to take a little time to talk about my CNC machine. Let's start out by talking about what the letters CNC means. CNC means computer numerical control. Okay, so I'm on my fourth CNC build. A majority of this build came from Open Builds, and that is a, uh, a company online that sells the parts or the kits to build a complete machine, all the way from a small 200 by 200 millimeter uh, up to a 1500 by 1500 millimeter. And what that means in American terms is, uh, or American or English measurement terms is, uh, this is capable of cutting up to about uh, four by four on, in one leg, or I can slide a four by eight and run it twice. In other words, half uh, on one side and half on the other. Uh, why I didn't go for a full four by eight machine is because my shop is just too small uh, to have a machine that large uh, taking up space that I don't use enough to justify. However, having a machine of this nature in my shop makes a huge difference. Uh, rather than farming out a lot of three dimensional letters, three dimensional cuts, engraving, those kind of thing, things, I'm able to do it right here in my shop. And for me, uh, I enjoy it. And uh, yeah, it just means I'm keeping more money in shop. Okay, so let's talk about my machine in particular. There are a lot of different machines you can go with, but I really like the open builds uh, system because it's just a really good, simple, reliable system that your average person with you know decent skills can put together and uh, yeah, start running fairly quickly. Usually you could put a machine like this together in a couple days. And I'm, you know, a lot of times you see them where they're putting them together in a day, half a day. I would say a couple days to take your time, make sure you're doing it right. Now I've made some upgrades to this machine from my last one uh, that cost me a little bit more money, but precision wise, I believe makes a big difference. Um, starting out with my linear rails. So we're gonna walk over here to the side so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This is a linear rail. It is the rail by which the machine follows or track, if you will, up and down, back and forth uh, to move the head of the machine for routing. Now, what I did on this machine is I used actual linear rail with bearings, and you can see that right there. That's your linear, linear rail and that's your bearing. And that just gives you a little more precise movement and needs very little to no adjusting compared to the wheel-based machines that are sold on open builds. Um, and what that does uh, on the open builds standard machine is these V grooves right here, they have wheels that run up and down these V grooves rather than these bearings. And they are they work very, very well. So I don't want to disparage them. They, they work very well, but I just prefer the precision of using these linear rails. Um, my last machine, as a matter of fact, my first machine I built, I sold to a friend of, friend of mine, and that was six years ago. Uh, and that machine is still running strong. He uses it to make... Uh, camp signs and those kind of types of signs. And uh, he's still using that machine. And I went over his place the other day and just did some minor tuning after six years and it still runs really, really well. So the open builds setup, I have to say, uh, I think is one of the best uh, hobby to medium uh, grade machines that you can get out there. It's just a very well made machine, very well thought out. Um, I, some of the other upgrades I've done is I've gone to the uh, NEMA 23 high torque motors. Uh, I tried to make my control system, the control box, I placed it in what I believe is a very good spot to get at. I made sure I had lots of air going around it. One of the things I did too is on my French cleat, I made a little 
platform for my vacuum to sit on, which makes it easier to run the, the vacuum right down to the, the head of the uh, router. And instead of an actual boot, I've got a side vacuum that I 3D printed. And another little thing I added to this particular one is I used a heavy duty uh, fish tank pump to blow air on this side of the bit. And I find that that actually, for me, does a better job of keeping the dust out of the work surface area and the grooves and, and also keeping dust clear in general, rather than using a boot, because now you're not only blowing the air to dust, remove dust, you're also kind of helping keep the bit cool. And to me, that's important. Uh, coming back down here, I'm gonna go over a couple things real quick. So I did a few cheats right here. So everything is on a surge protector as, as they should be. But if you come right here, you're gonna see this little box where it's, there's a plug. And what that does is when I turn on the router, this automatically turns on the vacuum and the uh, fish tank blower or fish tank compressor, if you will. And to make that work, to do two, I simply bought from Amazon a secondary plug, you can see right there, that splits into two plugs. So both my vacuum and my air pump are both plugged into that relay, which again, all I have to do is turn on the CNC machine and both of those turn on automatically. Another thing I tried to do is, is rather than just having all the wires go into one hole, I ended up splitting them all up so that I can quickly see which wire is going where when I go into the control box. And we're gonna go ahead and open this up. Now, Open Builds now has their own control box uh, that's relatively inexpensive. In the past, you've had to either use like a simple Arduino machine or actually break it out into individual drivers. And, and this ended up making it way, way easier. And here you have your 12 volt power system. And this is where everything comes in, of course. And then moving to the door, I added another 12 volt, a smaller 12 volt power system. And, and this basically just runs the fans and the uh, uh, LED light that's actually under the, the bit so that you can see what you're working on. So that's basically, basically all there is to my control box. There's some of your inputs right there for the control box. Uh, for the and I believe it's called Black Xbox is what the control box for uh, the motion control system of this CNC is. And again, you can get that from Open Builds. And I gotta say they uh, and they don't sponsor me in any way, shape, or form. But I gotta say they send you whatever it is you purchase very quickly. They stand by their products. If you get something defective, they will uh, replace it. Uh, as long as you send back whatever it was that was defective. All right, so the software I use to run my machine. One of the big industry standards for sign making and cabinet making and such is called VCAR by Inspire. And I find this to be a very, very good software package for your sign industry, as well as under other industries, of course. It's relatively easy to use and you can do some really masterful work with it. The other software package I use is called a universal G-code sender. And this particular one is by, uh, I think I'm getting a little screen flutter on that particular screen. So the Hertz must be a little off compared to the phone. But nonetheless, this is basically what takes the coding generated by VCarve brings it into, you bring it into this software and takes that coding and spits it out to the machine and translates it into movement into the bit head. So that's what your G-code sender does. And it doesn't have to be a proprietary sender. There are free ones out there that uh, work just as well. As a matter of fact, this one was free from Open Builds. It was really easy to set up. So that's how I send a project from this computer to my CNC machine. All right, so that's a short video on my CNC machine. I hope you enjoyed it. They're awesome to have. Uh, and I would suggest, if you are a hobbyist, build your own machine, because there's one thing that I think is really nice about having built my machine, is that I know the machine. When there's an issue, I can pretty well 
diagnose it fairly quickly, where when you buy a machine, you don't know the nooks and crannies and ins and outs of that particular machine. So build one. You don't have to build an expensive machine. You can actually build one for as little as a few hundred dollars. I would suggest you do it. If nothing else, as a hobby. Now, you get into a bigger machine like the one I'm running, which is still considered hobby to, I don't know, mid-duty or light mid-duty. I would say that my machine cost about $2,500 all in. But again, you don't have to spend that much. You can probably, for that same machine without the linear rails, uh, I think you can come in right around $2,000. Um, and that's still very cheap for a CNC machine that I can do almost anything on. It will even mill aluminum. So that's a pretty big deal. So yeah, if you're looking at a CNC machine, the first thing I would suggest is building a small one. Know how the machine works. Uh, if you're a hobbyist or small shop, I'm not saying don't buy a, a nicer machine if you can afford it and you really want something at a higher end, but I'm saying for the rest of us out there who don't have five, 10, 20, 30,000 to blow and have a machine sitting in the corner that you only may use once in a while, I don't know, I, I can't justify it. But for me, part of the fun of this machine was actually building it. So yeah, get yourself a machine. This is Dave the Sign Guy, and we'll be doing another video on another project of a CNC machine that I'm making, and I'm trying to do this for under $1,000. So, yeah, tune in, and we'll talk about that later. Thank you.